So we're going to be talking about quantum theory. What quantum theory is, is going to be a theory that's going to help us explain what's happening to electrons inside an atom and where those electrons are located. This concept of quantum theory is going to start with something called quantum levels. An observation we can make that's going to help support this concept of quantum levels is going to be the light emission from electronically stimulated gases. So when we pass current through a glass tube that's filled with a gas of a certain element, we get light emitted. And that light emitted is going to be of very specific wavelengths of light associated with that specific element. So we can electronically stimulate these gases to provide light. Another observation is that we get a light emission from thermally stimulated metallic ions. So the flame test, when we put these metal salts in flame, we get light out. So from those observations, we can draw a certain conclusion. And that conclusion is that atoms are going to have specific or definite energy levels within them. Right? And the electrons are going to be at these energy levels, which means that the energy of the electron is going to be quantized. It's going to have a very definite energy. Okay? So we've got these energy levels where the electrons are at. The energy levels within the atom are at very specific energies. So to illustrate this, we can look at like a ball rolling down a staircase. If I look at a ball rolling down a staircase and each step is considered an energy level, as the ball rolls down the staircase, it doesn't stop halfway between two steps. It rolls from one step to the next. Okay? It falls from that higher step to that lower step. Well, the same thing can be said about electrons in these energy levels. If electrons move within these energy levels, it's going to stop at very specific energies at each individual energy level. It's not going to stop halfway between two energy levels. Okay, which means that the energy of these electrons are going to be quantized based upon where these energy levels fall within the atom. Now another thing to go along with this concept of a staircase is that if an electron needs to go from a lower energy level to a higher energy level, we have to put energy in. That's called an absorption process. In other words, if I want the ball to go from the bottom step to the top step, I have to lift the ball up and carry it up those steps. I have to put energy into the ball. As an electron goes from a higher energy level to a lower energy level, it's going to have to lose energy and it's going to stop at a very specific step. That's going to be an emission process. Okay, so those absorption processes, the emission processes involve energy transitions that we can relate based upon delta E being E final minus E initial. The energy state of our final minus the energy state of our initial. So wherever our electron started, that's the initial, where it ended, that's the final. So if it started at a higher step and ended at a lower step, we'd be going through an emission process, we'd be given up energy. It started at a lower step, went to a higher step, it would be an absorption process. We'd need to be putting energy in. Okay, that energy change is gonna be related to H nu, okay, or Planck's constant times frequency. Now, another thing we can think about in terms of a, a slightly different picture of an atom if I look at an atom and I've got a nucleus in the center, each of these steps is a different energy level surrounding that nucleus. And these energy levels, where we see the quantum number listed there, it's the principal quantum number, n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3, n equals 4, or 5, 6, 7. All right, those are different energy levels where the electron can actually stop and exist, but it's not going to stop somewhere in between, let's say, n equals 1 and n equals 2. Now it's going to be either at n equals 2 or n equals 1. It can't stop anywhere between. This relates to something called the Bohr model of the atom. All right, it was really Bohr's idea that the energy of the atom is going to be quantized. It's at these different energy levels. Okay, now because it's quantized, it means these energy levels can only have very specific and well-defined amounts of energy associated with them. And the amount of energy in the atom is going to be related to the electron's position in the atom. All right, so a picture of this. If I look at that little red circle there, that's my nucleus. And then I've got my different quantized energy levels around the nucleus, the n equals 1, n equals 2. I can see I can have different transitions of an electron. And those different transitions are going to have different energies associated with them. Remember, energy is also associated with wavelengths of light as well as frequency. So in this picture here, let's look at the violet transition there. If I have an electron in n equals 5 and it moves to the n equals 2 energy level, 
it's going to lose energy. The energy it gives up is going to produce a violet color, or that 434 nanometers of light. Now, a couple of definitions we need to worry about. We need to worry about something called an excited state, something called a ground state. Excited state is going to be where an electron has moved up to a higher energy level than where it started with. So that at that higher energy level, it's in an excited state. It's got higher energy than it really wants to. Ground state is where that electron is going to fall back down to. Okay, now ground state is not always the lowest energy level inside an atom. Okay, in this case, for the violet color, we started with n equals 5, ended up at n equals 2. So my excited state was at that n equals 5 level, my ground state was at that n equals 2 level. Okay, even though there's an n equals 1, my transition was between the 5 and the 2. Okay, so the 5 was my excited, the 2 was my ground state. If I look at the blue-green color, going from the 4 to the 2. So the 4 is the excited, 2 is the ground state in that transition. And then the red is the 3 to 2 transition. Now these are all emission processes because these electrons are going from a higher energy to a lower energy. But if they all started in N equals 2, how did they get to that higher energy in the first place? Well that's where we have to either thermally stimulate them or electronically stimulate them. So we pass current through the gas to cause them to go from that N equals 2 to the N equals 5. When they fall back down from the N equals 5 to the N equals 2, that's where they emit their light. Okay, so we have to get them somehow into that excited state first before they can fall back down to the ground state and emit the light. All right, with that Bohr model though, it's going to be based on three postulates. So first one, electrons are permitted only in orbits of certain radii from the nucleus of definite energies. Okay, those are those circles we were talking about. Those are very specific energy levels. Electrons are only permitted in those orbits. An electron in that orbit has that same energy, has a specific energy. So if the electron's in the n equals 5 state, that electron now has that energy associated with that n equals 5 energy level. Another postulate is that energy is only emitted or absorbed by an electron as it changes from one energy level to another. Okay, we can only go through that emission process between those energy levels. So we won't have emission or absorption if it's not changing energy levels. Now those energy transitions are going to be related to that delta E equation we saw before where we said E was equal to H nu or HC over lambda. Well now we're going to be talking about the delta E. That's going to be equal to HC times negative R sub H. That R sub H is something called the Rydberg constant which is 1.097 times 10 to the 7th meters to the negative 1. Okay, so HC negative Rydberg times 1 over N which is those quantum numbers we saw, the n equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's going to be 1 over my final n squared minus 1 over my initial n squared. When I look at this equation, if I want to calculate that energy associated with the n going from 5 to 2, well my final would be 2, my initial would be 5. When I do that calculation, I'd get an energy. I could convert that energy to a wavelength and figure out it's that 434 nanometers that we saw previously. Now, another thing to look at here is we have HC times negative R sub H, negative Rydberg constant. Well, H is a constant, it's Planck's constant. C is a constant, speed of light. R sub H is a constant. Well, if all three of those are constants, we can just combine them all together and get a new value out that's going to be a constant value. So we can simplify it just to be this delta E is equal to negative 2.18 times 10 to the negative 18 joules times 1 over N sub F squared minus 1 over N sub I squared thing to keep in mind with these energy transitions, pay attention to those signs, just like we had to when we were dealing with exothermic, endothermic reactions. The sign is just going to indicate whether we're absorbing or whether we're emitting that energy. All right, so let's take a slightly different view of this, where we can see if I start at that low energy, which is my bottom line, and let's say that's my n equals 1, the second line there is n equals 2, third line 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Notice that the spacing gets closer and closer together the further out we go. Um, so it's not a uniform spacing between all of these energy levels. Where would the nucleus be in all of this? Well it would be below that first energy level. So as we get further and further away from the nucleus, we get a smaller and smaller distance between energy levels but we're still looking at these energy transitions as we go from one energy level to another. Right? You can see those different energy transitions. 
result in different colors or different wavelengths of light we get out. But keep in mind, in order to go from that lower energy level to a higher energy level, we have to put in energy that's sufficient enough to move that electron from that ground state or lower energy level to that excited state, higher energy level, before it can then fall back down and emit its energy in the form of light. So that's why things like a copper salt doesn't emit the green color. The copper salt, when put in a flame though, will emit a green color. Why? Well, because that flame is causing those electrons to get excited. When they fall back down, they emit a green color. Now, when we consider just hydrogen, we've got well-defined energy levels within hydrogen. So n equals 1 has got that energy listed there. n equals 2, n equals 3, n equals 4. They've got very specific energy levels. So if I wanted to measure the difference in energy between those energy levels, it'd be easy enough just to take my final minus initial. If I don't know those energy values, though, I can easily use that equation that involves the Rydberg constant. All right, so let's look at a calculation involving this. So let's say I have an electron in a hydrogen atom that goes from n equals 2 to n equals 5. Well, I want to calculate my energy associated with it, so I have to use this equation. I plug everything in. Now keep in mind, I'm going from n equals 2 to n equals 5, not n equals 5 to n equals 2. So my final is my 5, my initial is my 2. Gives me a value of 4.58 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. It's a positive value. Why is it a positive value? Well, that's telling me I have to put energy in. right? In order to go from n equals 2 to n equals 5, I have to put energy in. So if I'm putting energy in, is this going to be an absorption process or an emission process? If I'm putting energy in, it's got to be an absorption process. Okay, So that sign of delta E in this case is going to tell us whether it's being emitted, whether we're absorbing that energy. Now, what wavelength of light is going to be associated with this transition? Well, if I know that's my change in energy, and I know delta E is equal to h nu or hc over lambda, I can plug everything in, making sure I'm paying attention to my units. Okay, solve for lambda, and I get 4.34 times 10 to the negative seventh meters, or 434 nanometers. So, what color is this going to be? Well, it's going to be in that violet region or blue, blue violet. So that's walking through a calculation dealing with the movement of these electrons through these quantized energy levels and the wavelengths that are going to be associated with it. Now when I look at a hydrogen atom, keep in mind these transitions that I'm looking at aren't always limited just to visible wavelengths. I keep saying light when I'm talking in terms of electromagnetic radiation. Now, if I end up as n equals 2 as my ground state, well, those are going to be visible wavelengths of light. But if I end up with n equals 1 as my ground state, any of those transitions are going to result in a higher energy. Well, that higher energy then means I've gone into the ultraviolet region. If I end up with n equals 3 as my ground state, I've gone to lower energy difference. Well, if I've gone to a lower energy, I end up in the infrared wavelengths. So with these transitions between an excited state and a ground state, in order to go from that excited state to ground state, we have to emit energy. That energy is going to be emitted in the form of electromagnetic radiation. Depending upon the energy difference determines what wavelength of electromagnetic radiation we're giving off. These electrons in an atom are going to be at these specific energy levels. All right, but we run into a problem we mentioned briefly before and that if we try to actually measure where exactly these electrons are at, we're going to change their behavior. So we can't measure exactly where they're at. So what we have to do is we have to look at something called probability. 